What's going on guys? I'm Chris and today I've got a pretty special video. Uh, I'm going to be talking about my favorite uh, year ever for movies, but I'm not doing this alone. I'm joined with a good friend from YouTube who I've collaborated with before, Chris Hurtado from Hurtastic Reviews. Chris, introduce yourself. Hey everyone, thanks for uh, tuning in to Chris's Film Stocked episode. It's really great stuff. Uh, Chris, thanks you so much for inviting me. <laughs> Uh, when you hit me up with this topic, I was a little floored. I was like, gosh, I never really thought what's the best year ever. I, I've been told what are the best years ever, but I'm really excited now to kind of put my two cents in here. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, this is going to be a fun discussion. There are so many great years for movies that stand out. Um, my pick is probably pretty obvious, but You'll see what it is later, but we're going to give some honorable mentions for years because, like I said, there's tons of years that are just fantastic for movies. So I'll go ahead and give a few honorable mentions. Uh, one of those honorable mentions would be the year 1994, which had Forrest Gump, Shawshank Redemption, and Pulp Fiction all up for Best Picture at the Oscars, which is just insanity. Those are three of the best movies ever mm -hmm. made. And The Lion King came out that year, which is my favorite animated movie of all time. So... <laughs> 1994, one of the best, and another honorable mention would be 1999, which is another definitive year for movies. You had The Matrix, American Beauty, the start of the Star Wars prequels with The Phantom Menace, oh. the infamous mm -hmm. prequels, and uh, there were a lot of other great <laughs> movies that came out that year, so those are my two honorable mentions. Uh, what about you? Um, Jeez, dude. So when you asked me about this, doing this list, I... Two of them came to mind, and the one I'll say that didn't make it, and the one I chose instead, this one is 2017. 2017 for film, Lady Bird, Shape of Water, The Call Me By Your Names, um, Three Billboards, uh, Good Times came out that year as well, um, Get Out as yeah. well, one of the best modern horror movies. Oh, yeah. Um, honestly, 2017, I've still said it, okay, since when 2018's Oscars came out... <laughs> I wasn't very happy, and I said, why can't we go back to 2017? And then 2019 came out, and I was like, this is a really great year for a film as well. But, like, it still didn't match what 2017 was doing in terms of, like, commercial releases and Oscar movie um, releases. So 2017, for me, I think deserves an honorable mention. I think it just sl uh, misses the mark. The last honorable mention, I'll say, is 1973, because you had The Exorcist come out, you had... The Wicker Man film come out, which I actually think is really great. Um, you had American Graffiti come out as well. And then you had 1973 Best Picture winner, uh, The Sting, with Robert Redford and Paul Newman on there. Um, and then you had one of my all-time favorite Criterion releases. Um, I wish I'd talk about it a little bit more, but um, it's Fantastic Planet. Uh, that movie came out in 1973. Um, if you want to get into like, kung fu movies, um, Enter the Dragon came out. Scorsese with Mean Streets came out, and then for I know this you're gonna like this movie, Chris uh, Papillon, which is a Steve McQueen break breakout movie that came out in 1973 as well. Uh, that's an honorable mention as well for me. Did Deliverance come out that year as well, or am I making that up? I think that was '76, uh, but don't quote me on that. It's either, but that's a good movie. Yeah, it's solid with Burt Reynolds. But um, mm -hmm. I guess I'll go ahead and give my favorite year ever for movies. Uh, kind of an obvious pick, but I really don't care because it's amazing. And that is the year 2010. The start of this past decade is easily my favorite wow. year for movies. It's it's insane. I mean, The Social Network is there. That's my favorite David Fincher movie. Inception, arguably my favorite Nolan movie. And then you've got Toy Story 3, which is my favorite Toy Story movie. So those right there are all fantastic movies. But there's also The Other Guys, one of the best comedies in recent years. It's just mm -hmm. such a quotable, mm -hmm. hilarious movie. You've got Tangled, one of the better Walt Disney animated movies in recent years. Uh, 127 Hours, directed by Danny Boyle, starring James Franco. Another great movie. True Grit, a modern western by the Coen brothers that I really dig. Uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. Uh, I prefer Part 2, but this movie really set the stage for the epic conclusion. you got The Town, another great movie, directed by Ben Affleck. The Fighter, uh, David O. Russell with uh, Bale's best performance, in my opinion. So yeah, 2010 is just a completely loaded year. And I really do think it's my favorite year ever for movies. Uh, like I said, countless modern classics, instant classics, and it's crazy that The King's Speech is the movie to win Best Picture for this year. I think that's blasphemous. <laughs> like, that movie's fine. Yeah. It's fine. But how does it beat The Social Network and in Inception? I, I just don't get it. 
Okay, The Social Network. David Fincher, love that movie. Yeah. My God. Dude, I remember when I saw The Social Network. That's like a movie I quoted all the time. Like, I remember telling my friends, lawyer up, asshole, because mm-hmm. I'm not just coming for my share. I'm coming for everything. So good. Andrew Garfield is phenomenal in that movie. I remember watching True Grit with my dad. And he loved mm-hmm. that movie. I did, too. Um... God, that was just such a good... I remember even watching the King speech that year with my dad yeah. and thinking, like, this is a good movie. But, yeah, it's crazy that that's the movie that represented for Best Picture that year. Yeah. But that's usually the Oscars, right? Yeah, I mean, usually they get it wrong, so... <sighs> Sometimes. It's definitely in 2018, that's for sure. Well, Chris, I would say my favorite year... I wasn't even alive for this. You were alive for 2010. I remember even watching that Oscars. Um, it was probably Billy Crystal hosting that Oscars, No, if I, if I know anything. Um, but my think the best, uh, it's not the best year ever. Now, like, when you told me, like, what's, like, the best year for a movie, like, I would say 84 is up there for sure. Um, but I'm, I kind of pick, like, my favorite year. Um, in my favorite year, I think, for movies was in 1979. I knew you were going to say um, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't know if that's obvious or just because you've, like, known, like, you know my I think it's just because I know you, Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, yeah, it's, it's fitting if people watch this, it's you with me collaborating or just, like, my channel in general. They'll know 79 is my favorite year because, uh, like, my favorite movie of all time came out the year with Alien in 1979 by, directed by Ridley Scott. There's probably a glare. I'm sorry. Name me a movie with a perfect cast where the cast ended up being successful even after this movie. Sigourney Weaver, um, Yafet Koto, Tom Skerritt, Harry Dean Stanton, Bill Cart, um, not Billy, uh, Veronica Cartwright, um, Ian Holm, John, Hur- uh, John Hurt, like, come on. Like, that cast is impenetrable, I think, in terms of, like, early movies where everybody gets successful after. Um, obviously, you get, um, the Best Picture winner, which was Kramer vs. Kramer, and despite what anybody would think, I think they got it right in 1979 with this movie, um, obviously Dustin Hoffman, divorce movie, pre-marriage story, I guess, for modern day audiences. I still think this movie is really good. I think there's some good quotes in this movie that I think that hold out. Um, other movies that stand out, if you're looking for cult classics, The Warriors stands out with the, the whole Cassius saying, can you dig it? With all the, you know, the gangs in the park. Um, the whole bottle clapping with the warriors you know i just i remember seeing this movie and i was like man growing up in the 70s must have been scary but also kind of cool at the same time you know you could get away with things when you want to talk about like horror movies i I don't know like how you know like okay this movie in this movie's like cover art is graphic but abel ferreira's 1979 i covered this movie on my channel is I think a bona fide great movie that needs to be checked out. It's an Arrow Steelbook release. I think it's out of print. I'm not trying to flex. I actually just trying to give a detail here. Um, but yeah, here's the alternate cover side. It's a guy getting drilled. I think it's a lot deeper than people give it credit for, and it's out by um, Arrow. This movie is just really good, and it came out in 1979. Are you crazy? Like the 70s to me is like the best year for cinema period. Like you had like grunge movies like that are dirty and nasty like the Texas Chainsaw movies. You had like really well renowned cinema films like The Godfather. Um and then last movie in 1979 Woody Allen. I think this is the part where YouTube is going to ban this video because we're <laughs> tight saying his name. Uh, but Manhattan I think is a better movie than Annie Hall in 1976 despite what people think. I think it was 76 or 77. Not 76, I think. Um, but, um, yeah, I think this movie is way better than Annie Hall. I just, yeah, Woody Allen. So, yeah, that's my favorite year. I think 79, I think, is my favorite and best year um, in terms of movies. Yeah, Alien, like, I remember when we collabed last time, I had not seen it. Well, I actually did watch it recently, and, dude, it's amazing. Like, I'm so happy I watched it. Oh, uh, I'm so happy you did. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the better, like, sci-fi horror movies ever made, easily. Uh Sigourney Weaver was great, and it's probably, it might be my favorite Ridley Scott movie. Yeah, his filmography, when you start, after post-Blade Runner, I would say, some of his stuff gets a little questionable, besides, yeah. obviously, Gladiator. Mm-hmm. There's so many great years in movies. I, I'd say the 70s is one of the definitive decades ever, like you said. You had the Godfather movies, you had uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Alien, Taxi Driver, Rocky. Yeah. We didn't really talk about the 80s, but that was like the, the decade of the blockbuster, in my opinion. Yeah, Spielberg. I mean, he had his first um, feature-length movie, Jaws, come out in 75. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
And then he blew up in the 80s, you know. 84, mm-hmm. I think, is technically, I think, the best year ever. Really? Uh, yeah, like Nightmare on Elm Street came out that year. Temple of Wes Doom. Craven. Temple of Doom with Indiana Jones. 84, I always think... I need to pull the list because I'm one of those guys who needs to like see it in front of me to like compare. Yeah. But um, if I had to put my money on something, I'd, 79 for me is always going to be my favorite. But the 80s, I think, was definitely the best year. And when you talk about the 20... When 2010, when you said it was like, that's your favorite and best year, mm-hmm. that's really hard to argue. The 2010s, despite the um, the Green Books... Um, Despite Amore from 2013, if you watched the last, listen to the last podcast, uh, despite the Jokers, <laughs> I, I mean, I dude, I like help. Joker. <laughs> I do too. I do too. I'm sorry, but you know what I mean. There's some hit or misses. There's the um, year 2014, which neither of us talked about, which is phenomenal. You had Whiplash. Yeah, you had Nightcrawler. Birdman. I feel like that's Birdman, which is great. I, I'm glad I watched that one recently. Uh, I think yeah. Grand Grand Budapest was 2014. Yeah, yeah. So it was yeah. solid. I graduated high school that year as well, um, to show my age. You could argue every year, honestly. <laughs> There's going to be like that one hit from every year. So, I mean, I'm glad we got to have this discussion because 2010, it's it's a great year. And 79 is great. There's, I mean, the 90s were awesome too. It's just, you could make like a series of hour-long videos about every single decade because there's so many great movies. Yeah, no, I totally agree, dude. I mean... When I watch a movie, I have to check what year yep. it came out and then compare it to like what else came for, out. Yeah, I do that all the time. Glad that you uh, got to come on for this video. Uh, we also, I was on Chris's podcast and channel, Her Task Reviews, so definitely check that out. And uh, do you have anything you want to plug? I want to plug Daniel from Cobwebs. It's a gothic cinema podcast, but man, they deep cut some stuff there that's really good. Also, Dracula from 1979, which is a recent <laughs> Scream Factor release with Frank Langella as Dracula released that year in 1979. I also want to shout out Nathan because his 100 Years of Movies uh, is a really good um, prototype to check out movies as well. Yeah, so uh, be on the lookout for that video on Chris's channel. It might already be up by the time this video goes up. Who knows? <laughs> but... Um, Definitely subscribe to his channel, Her Task Reviews, if you haven't. And if you like all the Blu-ray and Criterion content, uh, especially the boutique labels, as he would say, <laughs> uh, definitely go check out his channel. But uh, I think that's going to be a wrap for our discussion on our favorite year of movies. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, be sure to like this video. Comment down below what you think the best year for movies is and your favorite year as well. And uh, yeah, until next time, I guess I'll see you guys later.